In this video, I'll rank the top five operating systems on how good they are for trading from worst to best. The order probably isn't what you think. I also discovered some cool tech for a couple of the operating systems that you might not know of, so be sure to watch the entire video so you don't miss anything. At the end of this video, I'll also show you the trick that will get any trading program to work on any device. How's it? My name is Hugh and I've been trading since 1999. I've used almost every type of trading technology from Bloomberg terminals to mobile apps and everything in between. My goal in this video is to help you choose the right operating system for the way you trade. This is a big decision because it can either make your trading life really simple or extremely frustrating. Before I get started, just a word of note here, the operating system you choose will really depend on the way you trade, the broker you use, and what kind of devices you like to use. So although this is my ranking based on my preferences, what you choose to use might be different and that's fantastic. All right, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Coming in at number five is iOS slash iPadOS, and it's not even close. This is the worst by far. And from now on, I'm just gonna to refer to them as iOS to make things simpler. Now on the bright side, the benefits of using iOS is that it's easy to use, the hardware is excellent, and there's great compatibility across the entire Apple ecosystem. However, trading on a mobile device, especially a phone, is far from ideal and I would not recommend it. Sure, it can work for some traders, but most traders are gonna need more space to see the charts properly. The largest iPad is probably okay, but there are actually bigger issues with iOS than just the screen size. First of all, most mobile apps are stripped down versions of the desktop app. So there are gonna be functions missing. For example, like in MetaTrader, you can't install custom EAs or indicators on the mobile app. And for some traders, that can be a deal breaker. I know it is for me. Secondly, and more importantly, Apple keeps close control on what apps can be in the App Store and what those apps can do. Fairly recently, Apple removed the MetaTrader apps from their App Store, and that's not good for traders, especially if you're trading real money. An app you rely on could be here one day and gone the next, or a function within one of those apps that you need could be removed if it doesn't meet Apple's policy. And the final reason not to carry an iOS device is that it has the best tracking out of any device on the market. In this case, being the best is not a good thing. For an excellent fact-filled breakdown of this risk, I would highly recommend watching Rob Braxman's video on the iPhone 16. It's very enlightening. And if you're interested in seeing where all this tracking could potentially go, I would highly recommend watching the movie Don't Look Up, purely for entertainment and speculation purposes only. Anyway, the bottom line is that I used to every day carry an iPhone from about 2008 up until 2020. And for the reasons I just mentioned, I will not every day carry an iPhone again. Moving on to number four, as you probably guessed, it's Android, the most used operating system in the world. Now I actually considered putting Android at number three, but after I did some scoring, which I'll show you in a minute, I realized that it does belong at number four. Even though Android is number four, to me it's the most interesting operating system on this list because of all the fun options that are available. Android doesn't suffer from the same censorship issues that iOS has because you can easily sideload any app via APK and you're off and running. My favorite flavor of Android is a de-googled version of Android, and that does not report my information to the Google servers every three nanoseconds. If you're using a stock version of Android and your battery life sucks, it's probably because of all that information that is being sent. I've been carrying a de-googled phone since 2021, and it's awesome. I usually get two solid days of battery life with normal use. De-googled Android also usually works well on older phones because it's not doing all that sneaky stuff in the background, so the phone lasts longer and it stays fast. But I'm just getting started with Android. If you have a Samsung phone, they've built a cool party trick that's perfect for trading. It's called Samsung DeX, and they have been shipping it with their higher-end phones and tablets since 2017, but not too many people know about it. So if this interests you and you have a Samsung phone, be sure to check it out because you might already have it. DeX gives you a desktop-like experience when you plug your phone into a larger screen. So this solves the problem of small charts on a mobile device. Even the largest tablet in the world is no match for DeX when it's plugged into a 50-inch television. Sure, you can do screen mirroring on an iPhone too, but the problem is you ultimately have the same size content on the phone and on the screen. On top of that, you have to look at the phone to control what's on the TV. When you use DeX, however, you have the option of using your phone as a trackpad and a keyboard, or if you have a wireless keyboard, you can just use your phone as a trackpad, or if you have a separate mouse and keyboard, then you can use your phone as a phone while running DeX on the big screen at the same time. So for example, you could run TradingView on DeX on the big screen while you're using your messaging app on your phone. Pretty awesome, right? All right, so here's a quick example of how this works. I have my Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. I'm just gonna plug it in with an HDMI adapter to the USB-C, monitors on. So when it detects the phone, it's gonna turn on and it's gonna start using this as a monitor. And there you go, as you can see, this is a desktop-like experience. So now if I go into my notifications, I can tap on this notification, which turns it into a trackpad. So 
I don't know if you can see that but I'm moving the mouse around with the trackpad like that and then I can go down here I can open up trading view as you can see now I can get a full screen trading view that would be much bigger than the uh, trading view on my phone now if I want to type anything in the bottom of the phone will become a keyboard and I can simply type it out there and the top of it is still a trackpad and I can use it to move the mouse around however if I want to use Dex and my phone separately then I would need to have a separate keyboard and mouse but then I can use uh, my phone as a phone for whatever I need it for and then I can use Dex separately as a desktop computer basically now in my experience I've noticed that some apps don't play well with Dex so that's something you have to test out but the concept is awesome and if the apps that you use work well with Dex then this can be a great solution but wait it gets better this one could be the ultimate mobile solution out of anything on this list. The problem with the deck setup that I just described is that in order for it to be beneficial, you have to have a monitor with you that's larger than your phone or your tablet. Kind of hard to do if you're at a coffee shop or at an airport. It's possible, but do you really want to be this guy? So in those situations, it's just better to bring your laptop. Unless you have one of these. They're a pair of AR or augmented reality glasses. In my research, Xreal makes the best glasses as this is being recorded. This is not sponsored or anything. That's just my independent research. If you want to check them out, there's a link in the description below. Xreal glasses effectively allow you to see a 300 inch monitor in front of you while wearing what look like regular sunglasses. So now when you're traveling, you don't have to carry this and you can just carry this. Now these aren't actually Xreal glasses. This is just a case that I have to demonstrate what the package would look like, but I am thinking about picking up a pair in the future to check them out. So if you have a phone like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, you could use it with the Xreal glasses and theoretically walk around with your charts all the time. Now I'm not recommending that you do this because it's probably not healthy, it would be incredibly distracting and also very dangerous, but I think you can see the potential here. If you're working on an airplane or in a coffee shop, it would be great to have such a huge screen in front of you and not have to take up too much space. Now on the downside when it comes to small screen size and stripped down apps, Android does suffer from the same issues that iOS does. Being able to download and install any app also comes with some security risks, so make sure you're getting your apps from a reputable developer. All right, now moving on to number three, which is Mac OS. I have a love-hate relationship with Mac OS. On one hand, it is the best operating system for most people, from students to grandma. The new Apple Silicon chips are also fantastic with amazing speed and great battery life. However, when it comes to trading programs, Mac OS is pretty terrible on its own. The only way to get reliable trading programs on a Mac is to install Parallels and then install Windows in Parallels and then install the trading programs in Windows. As this is being recorded, other virtual machines on Mac will not install Windows for some reason, so Parallels is the only option. There are several trading apps like MetaTrader that claim to run on Mac OS, but what they're really doing is installing Wine, which is a janky Windows emulator. Then they install MetaTrader in that janky emulator. So MetaTrader has a lot of issues when you're running in Mac OS through Wine and I do not recommend it. It's not good for trading real money. When you run trading programs in Windows on Parallels, however, it runs perfectly. Here's a list of popular trading programs and which operating systems they run on. To show you exactly how Mac OS stacks up, I created a spreadsheet with some commonly used trading programs like MetaTrader, TradingView, TradeStation, AmiBroker, etc. So for each operating system, I did some research and if the full version could run natively on the operating system, I put a yes. If it was limited, I put a yes limited. That's usually a mobile app. If it could only run on a VM, then I put yes via VM. And if it could not run at all, then I put a no. Then I created a basic point system where yes is three, via VM is two, limited is one, and no is zero. So when I put all of the scoring together, Mac OS stacked up pretty well. It came in second, just behind Windows. When you look at the overall results for Mac OS, however, a lot of the programs do rely on a virtual machine, namely Parallels. So if you're not willing to use Parallels, then a lot of these programs won't work. The only downside of Parallels is that it's a yearly subscription. I don't like that model. I'm totally fine with paying for version upgrades, but if they're gonna charge a yearly fee, even if they don't do any updates, then that's not right in my opinion. But that's your call to make. The monthly cost isn't that much, and you can still keep your beloved MacBook. I'm sure they also have to pay a licensing fee to Apple in order to get Windows to work on their VM, so that's an additional cost for them. Again, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a solution that will allow you to run any trading program on your Mac without installing Parallels. But if you're going to run Mac OS by itself, I would not recommend doing it unless your trading programs only run in a browser. 
Before you started watching this video, I'll bet you thought Windows was going to be number one on this list. Now after seeing my scoring sheet, you probably still think Windows is going to be number one on this list. But if that's the case, then you are wrong because Windows is at number two. Now there was a time when Windows probably could have been considered the best operating system in the world. And I use best operating system very loosely. It was more like the most practical and that was around 2001 when XP came out. Unfortunately, trading technology is notoriously slow at catching up to current technology, so a lot of trading programs are still stuck in 1995 and only run on Windows. Theoretically, that should make it the best operating system for trading because it's compatible with the most programs, but there's more to consider than just compatibility. There have been and still are so many problems with Windows that it would probably not fit on Wikipedia, but I'll spare you the trauma of the details and just give you the highlights. Although Windows has become much more stable over the years, it still suffers from two big problems. The first is the overall mentality of Microsoft. To me, they have always been a company who just throws things together, jumps on the latest trend, without any regard to building a quality product or things that people actually want. It feels like they're just chasing the money. Just look at their failed projects like the Zoom Media Player, Windows Phone, the Band Tracker, and Groove Music, just to name a few. Windows also includes a ton of junk that is basically spam. Now in all fairness, Microsoft has gotten better over the years, but that ethos is still lurking just below the surface. So using Windows as your primary operating system will always be just good enough, you'll never love it. And there will always be those weird errors that only Windows can have. Second, and more importantly, Windows is straight up spying on you. Now other operating systems are also, but Windows seems to be the worst offender. Again, this seems to go back to the overall mentality of Microsoft not caring about the customer, and just simple greed, they just want to collect as much data on you as possible. Now the first major issue with Windows is that it logs keystrokes by default. So whatever you type into your keyboard, your passwords, your emails, all of that stuff gets recorded by default. And if you go in there and turn it off, who knows if it's really turned off or not. Now according to Microsoft, only specific employees can access this data, but do you want anybody to access that data? I hope not. The second big thing that Microsoft is pushing in Windows is called Recall. And what Recall does is it basically takes a snapshot of your screen every five seconds. If that's not creepy, I don't know what it is. Now I hope I'm stating the obvious here, but trading is a very financially sensitive endeavor. So you don't want your computer taking snapshots of your bank account information, your trading account logins and stuff like that. Microsoft says that you can go in and turn this off, but they are notorious for turning features back on when there's an update. And again, even if it looks like it's turned off, is it really turned off? So in my opinion, the best way to run Windows is to run it in a virtual machine. That way you keep it somewhat isolated and it should only record what's on the virtual machine and not all of the stuff on your computer. Which brings me to number one on the list, which is obviously Linux. Now you might think that I'm crazy for recommending Linux, but consider this. Many of the biggest companies in the world like Google and Amazon run on Linux servers. Exchanges like the New York and London stock exchanges run on Linux. And Android, which is basically Linux under the hood, is the most used operating system in the world. So why aren't you using Linux? Well, it's probably because nobody you know uses it. It has only become useful for the average person in the past few years. The Linux super geeks are finally catching on and they're putting out distributions that are easy for the average person to use and it's awesome. Distros like Linux Mint and Zorin Linux are very user friendly and super easy to install. Linux Mint is my favorite distribution. You can find the link in the description below. It's totally free to download and use. I have personally given up my M3 MacBook Pro and my everyday driver is now a Framework 13 laptop running Linux Mint. In true Linux form, there were a few things that I had to work out in the beginning, but once I got that sorted, it's been great. A quick warning here, it still does take some technical skill to set up Linux, but if you're up for the challenge, the payoff can be totally worthwhile in my opinion. I'm going to focus on the framework laptop for a second because I have been looking for something like this for a long time and it works well with Linux. The best thing about the framework laptop is everything on this laptop can be repaired and upgraded. To build coffee on your keyboard again? Not a problem. With this laptop, you can replace the keyboard and the mainboard if they get damaged. I can even upgrade the mainboard to a faster processor when this one gets slow. Another fantastic thing about this laptop is that I can hot swap the ports while I'm using the laptop. So in order to do that, I can just press this button, I can pull out the port like that. Then I can simply replace it with a USB-A, USB-C, Ethernet, or any of the other ports that Framework provides. This is great for mobile trading because I can charge the laptop on this side or on this side, and I can change the configuration of the ports depending on where I'm working that day. This laptop also has mechanical switches at the top that turn off your microphone and camera when you don't need them. Now it's not perfect and no computer is, but it does tick a lot of the boxes that I need for trading. You can find out more about this laptop via the link in the description below. This is not sponsored, I bought this with my own money, it is my everyday driver and I love using it. 
Anyway, let's get back to Linux. Now on macOS, you have to pay for Parallels in order to get Windows on your machine. But in Linux, however, there is a free virtual machine called KVM slash QEMU, and it works great. So I can install Windows in the virtual machine and have almost any trading program up and working in Windows. Except for Forex Tester Desktop, that's the only trading program I found that will not install on a virtual machine, and that is by design. I run the full versions of MetaTrader, Naked Markets, CTrader, and Ami Broker in the Linux VM, and it works great. Microsoft also allows people to use Windows for free, so you don't have to pay for that either. Now, if you really want to pay for it, go ahead and pay for it. I don't want to hear about it in the comments. There are a couple of ways to use Windows for free, but Microsoft has not stopped anybody from doing that. And that's probably because the information they're collecting from you is much more valuable than the measly 50 bucks or whatever they charge you for the license. In order to do this, all you have to do is download Windows 10 or 11 directly from the Microsoft website, and that's the safest place to get it. When you install Windows, simply skip the license key part and you can use Windows without a license. The only difference will be that there is a watermark in the lower right corner, and you won't be able to do some customizations like change your desktop wallpaper. But everything else will work perfectly. Well, I use perfectly loosely because it is Windows. It does run great in the Linux VM, however, and all of my trading programs work well. The boot up time for virtual machine Windows is about the same or a little bit faster than it would be if Windows was the primary operating system. A key difference between Linux and the other operating systems on this list is that you don't have to log into a central account and give up your personal information. On top of that, many Mac OS and Windows apps have free alternatives on Linux which are actually quite good. I was surprised. Therefore, when it comes to trading, using Windows on a virtual machine in Linux is the best of both worlds in my opinion. I can still access all of the trading features in the full versions of the desktop app in Windows, but I protect my privacy with Linux. And as a final bonus, Linux also works well on older computers because there's less bloat compared to Windows. So that means you won't have to buy a new computer as often. But wait, there's even more. After all that, there's one more way to get any trading program to work on any device. You just have to be willing to put in a little more work. For a long time before I got my Linux laptop, I used to run Windows on a separate computer at home. Then I would connect to it via remote desktop or an app like TeamViewer. Since all of the other operating systems have a remote desktop compatible app available, I was able to get into my Windows PC from any device, even a phone, and get the full version of all of my trading programs. There is a big asterisk here and this might not be the best solution for you. First, you need to buy and maintain a separate PC to run Windows. Now, this is not a big deal. You can get a solid mini PC on eBay for about $150. If you wanna learn how to get the best price, check out my video on the $100 laptop challenge. Once you've purchased your home PC, simply install Windows on it and put your trading programs on it. This is the computer that I used to use as my home PC server. I would highly recommend buying a Dell for your mini PC. In my experience working on computers since 1991, they have been the lowest cost and most reliable solution out there. Next, you have to set up access into that computer. And this is not a big deal if you're on your home network and both computers are on the same network. However, if you are away from home, this can get a little tricky and there are three things you need to know about setting up remote access. First, by setting up remote access from outside your network, you potentially open up your home network to attacks from the internet. Second, if you use a phone to remote into your Windows PC at home, then you still suffer from the small screen size. Third and most importantly, Windows will restart randomly after you do an update. So a lot of times after these updates, you can lose connectivity to your PC and that's not good, especially if you're out of town. I can hear you typing already. So yes, you can turn off Windows updates, but in Windows 10 and 11, this is just temporary. So you're always gonna have this problem of Windows randomly restarting. Another similar option is to rent a VPS or a virtual private server. And this is just like a Windows server that runs in the cloud and is maintained by a hosting company. The benefits of this solution is that the hosting company manages the server, you can access it from anywhere, and you don't potentially open up your home network to attacks. The only downside is that you have to pay a monthly fee, but this can be a small trade-off compared to the benefits that you get. You can also run your EAs and trading robots off of this server or the server at home. Now that you know everything about choosing the best trading operating system for you, why not continue learning about trading tech and watch the video that's coming up next.